entrepreneurs say they're suffering from late payment issues to over-regulation and now, of course, ever higher energy bills too. So we thought it was time to invite back the government's small business commissioner, Liz Barclay, for you to put questions to her right here on On The Money. Liz, thank you for coming in. Welcome to you. Um, thank you, first, Mark. Give us a, a snapshot of where we are, because we've heard that a lot of businesses, the smaller businesses, have been trying to absorb a lot of these extra costs, raw materials and now energy. Um, I mean, how are they set now as we come towards the end of the summer where people have been spending money, but won't be perhaps in the autumn? Struggling, I think, is probably the way to put it. Uh, a lot of uh, small businesses are very innovative. They're willing to take risks. They're only too willing to look for opportunities. They're pivoting. They're doing absolutely everything mm. they can to stay, to survive, to thrive, if at all possible. So, you know, the small businesses are not the engine room for no reason. Yeah. They are the ones that really will push ahead and have dragged the UK economy out of most recessions that we have experienced. But there are a lot of small businesses, micro businesses, employing maybe up to nine people, sole traders, freelancers, etc., who are really finding it difficult. And it's not just the energy bills. It's not just raw materials. It's water as well. And you yeah, can as we've been hearing water. today. It's all of those bills coming at once. It's broadband. It's mobile phones. They're having to choose what are we going to pay and what are we not going to pay because the income isn't going up. And, of course, if your customers are walking past your shop, heart-renting comment from one customer the other day, who's, uh, one supplier the mm. other day, who said, I see my customers walking past because I've not been able to avoid passing on some of the increase in costs to the customers, but equally the customers have less income. They have less disposable income, yeah. and so they can't afford it. And you, you mentioned broadband and, and telephone and things. I mean, are there certain areas that really are finding it tougher uh, at the moment. I mean, obviously, people in, for instance, the uh, retail trades dealing with food and drink do quite well Very. in the summer because people are out and about. But they summer. are struggling. They are yeah. struggling because they're strugg they're, the skills shortage has meant that they're competing with the bigger companies for mm -hmm. wages. We saw a report earlier on this week that showed that, uh, sorry, that uh, most of the top 100 restaurants in the UK are in the red. I can't quite remember the figure, but it was something like 60%. Now, if the top restaurants are struggling, you can imagine that the middle yeah. restaurants are. Um, because obviously the big restaurants, they can buy in volume and, and therefore scale. they cost a slightly lower scale. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And they can still attract the skills, probably, because mm. they can afford to pay that bit more. A bit more. The little restaurants are really struggling to get the skills and, as you say, the scale. And, mm. of course, the people supplying them are struggling to get the water to... And round and round it goes. And round and round it goes. Yeah. OK, well, let's reflect on what you've been um, actually uh, putting to us to ask, Liz. Thanks for all your uh, questions today. I think we're going to uh, go to Sarah first, who's asking, uh, I'm owed £20,000 for goods that I have sent to a big retail platform. They haven't sold, and now I'm being sent bills for £50,000 for returning them. Duty, all sorts of other fees... I don't know how to get my money or my goods. Sarah's stuck. She is stuck. And uh, interestingly, Sarah is not alone on this because this is exactly the type of question that we had this week from a couple of other people who right. said... Um, so, and what has happened, and what I suspect Sarah is talking about too, is that she has sent her goods to a plat an online platform outside the UK. So, so she mentioned the word duty. Yeah, exactly. In order to get those goods back because they haven't sold, she's going to have to pay and she will have in her contract agreed to pay for storage, uh, marketing, transport. And import duties import, for them to come back in. And then the duties right. for them to come back in again. So for her to get them back in is really, really expensive and the company sent a, sent a huge bill. Uh, she said or more than fixed. double what, what they, they were worth. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the question that we were being asked last week from somebody who'd done exactly the same thing and was selling high-end fashion goods, mm. and, of course, if they don't sell in one season, who wants them the next season? Mm. I mean, I'm not a fashionista, but even I realise that yeah. they've gone out yeah. of fashion. Right. Um, and so yeah. she's asking, should I send next year's stock? If she sends next year's stock, she's possibly going to end up in the same boat. Really read your contract very, very carefully if you're going to sign up for one of these platforms. If they're not in the UK, they're outside our jurisdiction. Is, is, we uh, now that the fact we're outside the EU, is there anything that you can do to, to, to get it policed, if you like, for no. a wonder of a better... Right. Absolutely not. And it doesn't come under our remit 
as the Small Business Commissioner. We cannot help mm. you with payments if the company isn't headquartered in right. the UK. Sorry, Sarah, uh, you're still stuck, I'm afraid, for the moment. Uh, let's go on to Matthew. And uh, Matthew is saying, I've got a dispute with a customer who hasn't paid me for months and I'm talking to a lawyer about taking legal action. Is this my only option? I'm worried it will be too expensive. Indeed, uh, we know commercial lawyers do charge quite a bit. Um, and I, I guess, um, you know, if a sternly worded letter is not going to do it, you, you're wondering, what do I do next? However, we could help with the sternly ah, worded letter. Right. But if Matthew, if he talks to a lawyer, that's, that's OK. He's looking for some legal advice. Come to us before you start legal action. Because if, if you are within our remit and we can help you, we provide a free service. OK. Don't go to the lawyer as a first no. step. It may be that we haven't, you're not within our remit and we can't help, then the legal process is part of your rights and your protections. But come to us, come and talk to us first, please. And what, what would you then do? Uh, we have run a dispute resolution service. We will, oh, right. with your consent, of course, contact the customer and work out a plan to get you paid, if at all possible. Mm. Um, that's what our dispute resolution service but, is but, about. I mean, and again, it is free. Yeah, we reflect maybe that, that you know, a lot of people aren't paying their bills because they literally can't do it because they've got because cash flow waiting, problems of their own and they're, they're waiting, waiting for payments to come to, in. Yes, yeah. exactly, and you're back around that circle again. But sometimes the small business, like Matthew, is too scared yeah. to push back too far but, because they want the next lot of business. Exactly, to but the is there something you can do to oil the wheels if you can see that further down the system it's stuck? You can help maybe that company as well, just to get things moving. We certainly, cash when we talk to them, will be talking to them about their own situation. However, if there right. are, we are there to help the small businesses as opposed to the bigger businesses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got a tweet now from Star, a uh, bit more technical. Um, will the government legislate that companies with, say, one million turnover must settle invoices to their smaller suppliers within 30 days. Many small businesses die due to cash flow issues caused by bigger firms not settling on time. So, again, it's, it's bills being settled, but this time by the bigger businesses. And cash flow, you know, the perennial problem for, for all people cash trading. Cash flow is King. everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And, of course, many small businesses are dying because of that cash flow issue. We are seeing the bigger businesses offering them extended payment terms right. and pushing those payment terms further out, maybe 60, 90, 120 days. Be very, very careful what the contract says. Get it in writing. The problem is that we can't see, it's up to government, it's up to ministers, what they intend to legislate. In the meantime, legislation takes quite a long time and we have to help these businesses as much as we can. Be very clear about what the payment terms are before you take on any work. And part of the problem is that quite often we don't find out in advance. Right. And, and again, you know, uh, to avoid having to go to an expensive lawyer, could you help with that in terms of drafting tighter um, contracts? Come along, come along and talk to us about right. what you need to get in your contract. Hmm. A lot of small businesses simply take, uh, accept word of mouth. That's where the disputes arise because then the bigger customer says, I did tell you it would be 60 days, 90 days. And you're saying, no, you didn't. You told me it would be 30 days. And then you're in a dispute. But actually, if nothing is mentioned about payment terms, you are entitled. Default is 30 days. Right. But you're still, you're still going to get into the dispute because it's not in writing. Yeah. And everybody will argue that so, they I mean, said a lot of So, I mean, a lot of this is about communication. A lot it? of it is about communication. Most of it is about mm. communication. And honestly, Mark, most... Businesses, bigger businesses that I that we talk to don't and have never run small businesses themselves. So they don't understand how important that 300 quid is. And trying to get a big a business, business on the phone or even can be drop difficult. it. <laughs> you know, just as, as, as domestic customers, we know what it's like trying to get hold of someone to dispute something that hasn't been sent or. Absolutely, you know. but the person who gave you the work is probably not the person who's going to pay you in a bigger business. Mm. They don't know you from anybody no, else. That's true. And so they'll be all trying to pay their bills in yeah. priority order. Well, let's hope that's helped a few people. Anyway, Liz, thank you for being with us. But don't forget, if you've actually got uh, any uh, issues that you want to uh, raise with the Small Business Commissioner, uh, email gbviews at gbnews.uk. And Liz will obviously try and help okay. out next time she's on. Thanks for being thank with you very us. very much.